Welcome to another post-game media edition of Talking Hoosier Baseball. Today is Saturday, April 29th, 2023. Maryland is at last looking like the conference powerhouse that the national media were predicting they would be. The Terrapins are crushing the baseball, and today's Maryland starter, Kyle McCoy, was excellent at inducing weak contact. Maryland defeated Indiana 16-2, clinching the weekend series and taking sole possession of the lead league. Josh Pine was the only Hoosier with a multi-hit day, one of those an RBI single, and Carter Matheson hit his second home run of the weekend, driving in the Hoosiers' only other run of the game. After the contest, the media spoke with Indiana head coach Jeff Mercer and Indiana shortstop Philip Glasser. Jeff, uh, Maryland got off to big starts both games this weekend. How much do you feel like that put your guys in a position where you know they couldn't relax and they had to press a little bit to try to get back in it? Well, I mean, they're, they're a really good offense. You know, we had our chances there, and obviously that, that balloon's there late, right, where they have the big eight. And, right. and so it's you're, you know, six to one game in the middle of the ball game. And we had first and second, nobody out in the second inning, kind of same thing as yesterday. And we had bases loaded, no, it was bases loaded in two outs, but it's still, you're, 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 in, you're in the game, you're, you're out of a fighting chance as you compete your way through it. So, yeah, it does. It, it puts you a little bit behind the eight ball, but the reality is we had offensive opportunities last night. And offensive opportunities today to be able to push a few across and, and keep the keep the game in a situation where you feel better about it, um, and then and then kind of make your decisions with the bullpen there down the stretch late. But no, it, it does. I mean, they're, they're they're playing really really well, and, and their offense is, is good. I mean, it's it's really good. It's been good. It's going to be good. Um, and they're they're also they're just they're they're good and they're playing as well as they can play. So you put those two things together and. And yeah, you're right. It does put you a little behind it, and and their guy threw really well today. So you're navigating them being really good offensively on an offensive day with the, with the wind blowing out a little bit, and and then their guy has maybe his best performance as well. So it's just they're a really good team playing really really well, and, and you're trying to navigate that the best that you can. And, but yeah, I, I agree. You, you 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 may press a little bit, although I, I thought we competed well. It wasn't that guys weren't engaged. I thought last night we didn't have great body language and. And we weren't as engaged as we need to be. A little bit of like frustration early on, but I didn't sense that as much today as, as much as like we just kind of got beat. You talked about you talked about the hitting, but at the same time you mentioned the struggles against the pitching. People have stayed in the game against Maryland because McCoy, as you said, he's talented, but he's been hit hard by everybody else. Yeah. Dean has been hit hard at times. You guys have struggled. What's been the difference? You're not cashing in runs, but what's the difference? Why are you struggling at the plate against them when other teams in the Big Ten so far haven't? Sure. I mean, he was low to mid 90s today. I mean, he was throwing, that was his highest velocity of the season. So, I mean, it's, it happens oftentimes when it's, you know, 70 or 75 and sunny and guys feel good. And, you know, a lot of times, especially, you know, through this spring has been a cold spring. So, I mean, when you're, when you're, when you're playing and, and uh, it's a little bit different when you're playing in 75 degrees or so and guys are able to get loose. And I don't know. I mean, he was 92, 90, 94, maybe 95. And, and I mean, it's just, he was really good. And then as a velo dropped, you know, then it started to sink a little bit more. And then you have to make almost like two different profiles in the fastball. And, and we were on top of it a ton. And Dean didn't throw last week. And so had some had some forearm tightness and we didn't throw. So he has, you know, essentially two weeks off. And so he was really good. I mean, they were, they were just, they were good. And, and sometimes, <laughs> as unfortunate as it sounds and, and as simplistic as it sounds, sometimes they're just really good. And, and you have to kind of, Take it and move on. And so I, I don't. He was, you know, I would like I would like to see us be able to make an adjustment to the sinker better. A lot of like weak contact on top of the ball, um, but I'm not the one in the box trying to face a 95 mile an hour, you know, two seamer. So, uh, you know, it's a great question. I, I would say probably they they were a tick up. Their stuff was good, and the reality is like they're they're the defending champs for a reason. They, they've been in they've been in the position before. They understand what it's like. They know what it's like and. And so they've done a really good job of capitalizing on their opportunities, and they've played really well, and they've thrown really well. And so he was he was good today, and, and we had moments. You know, like I said, we had first and second, and nobody out, double play ball, and then uh, you know we had bases loaded there with an opportunity to maybe push a couple across and keep it a tighter game, and we weren't able to do it. So uh, no excuses. They just they just beat us. The you guys didn't name a starter going into the series for tomorrow, but yeah. now with the way that things have kind of shaken out, how do you see tomorrow? I would say, well, I haven't talked to Dustin yet. I would say probably Kraft. I said we would probably would start him tomorrow uh, and, and kind of see where it goes from there. But that's not 100%. I just need to talk to, to Dustin beforehand. And then, but you've got 
you know, you got Yoho and you got Foley, so you feel like you're in a fine position for tomorrow. And um, you know, we, we went to Phillips. He was kind of the plan there for us. Second, if we were, if it was like two, if we were down two or more to go to Phillips, and, and obviously Ethan's been really good. He's coming off being the conference pitcher of the week, and and you know, Sonard on the positive, Sonard's stuff was the best it's been since probably since we were at Texas. So back up to 92, 94, and had good stuff. He you know, two two run homers and. You know they, they can score in bunches, but he was really good. So that was good to see his his body recover this week and and, and respond. And you know Ethan had the big inning there, but uh, whatever happened on some of those <laughs> plays. But they were just good. They just they had put good swings on it. They they're 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 playing really well. They're a good team who's just on it right now. And and I thought Luke Hayden's stuff was better. We've been trying to work on a, on a, on a cutter with him, and he landed a couple of good ones, and the velo was good. So. Got to go back after it. Yesterday and today, you guys haven't really been able to get deep into Maryland's bullpen, which you said was a key coming in. Why is that? They've been really good. Weak contact and leverage counts. You just can't have you can't have weak contact consistently in leverage counts. You know, yesterday it was it was more through like the uh, a little bit of ride on the fastball and the changeup, and today it was just you had a really good action on the fastball. Um, and so you you put those you put those things together, and you have weak contact and leverage counts, and you never sting a guy. In those moments when you have a chance to do it again, first and second and, and, and two out. Or first, second, nobody out. And you push one across, you, and you you don't finish the inning, or you have bases loaded and we don't finish it, or, or guys on base, right? And we don't finish those innings. So when you when you have those guys that are having a good day, you either have to have instant offense, or you have to keep stringing it together. And we didn't have either one of those things where we weren't able to string it together consistently, and we didn't have instant offense. And so you look up and, and uh, you don't score many runs. There were uh, 16 ground outs when McCoy was pitching. What did you see or overhear from players uh, in trying to make an adjustment? Well, he did a good job of getting into lefties, and, and so he's throwing hard. Right? He's throwing hard, and he's landing his two seam into lefties, and so he got weak contact there. Um, and it wasn't as sinking as much as it was running early. And then once the velo kind of settled in like 90, 92, then it sank more than it ran. And so now you have a different profile. And that's kind of the question you ask guys. And you know, I, I hit, I hit so. I try really hard to, to remember what it was like to have a bat in my hands. And, and, uh, and so you try to ask questions and, and not be judgmental of what's going on. And that was kind of the sentiment was like, you know, early it was more side to side action with, you know, it was 92, 94, 95. And then later on it was more sync. And so now you have just a continuation of that. So you're right. We contact on top. And, and so as a coach, you, you're kind of stuck in between where you know he's, he's going to run it a little bit. But do you tell a guy to, to try to get to the middle of it, try to get to the bottom of it, right? Try to get the ball. You, you try to tell a guy to get the sinker up and be able to hit the ball hard, and you hope that by the second time or second at bat, or the second time you see the pitch, you're able to make an adjustment. And you can't because the same thing that, that, that allows you to have success being on the top half of a, of a four seam is going to be the debt to the detriment of a, of a sinker, right? So uh, if you tell a guy to get underneath it, now all of a sudden you change the swing. Like you're just kind of a little bit in. You have to trust the guy to be able to try to make make a mid at bat or, or a visual adjustment kind of through the through the course of seeing it, and we just weren't able to to, to string it together and do that. So you, you're right, 100. percent And you long spent the challenge of going up against Sam Cordero. It'll be the opposite handed, similar profile. I'll sink it the other way and throw a good change up, and we'll have to pull it up, and we'll have to try to get to the middle of the wall, um, and hopefully he's not 92 to 95. And, okay. and, uh, and having like a, a, a career day. So we just have to compete. You have to compete and you have to hope you can get him up and, and hit him hard and be better in leverage counts and be better with guys in scoring position. Long ball has been kind of a big part of Maryland's offense this week. I know that's kind of what they do, but is yeah. it just simply just them hitting the ball out of the park or is it just maybe some guys missing a few spots? I would say both. I mean, if you're gonna, if you're gonna get Shaw, you gotta get him in and he knows it and you know it and everyone knows it. If you can get it in, you can you can usually be okay. But if you miss over the middle, he's going to hammer it. And, and he's done that a couple of times where he's just having a really good weekend. And the same thing with the rest of those guys. You know, if, if it's a trust kid, like you, you try to throw a cutter up and in, and it's still a good pitch. It was profile wise, a good pitch. It's 91, and it's just like a cutter down, right? And he homers it, right? You're going to have, uh, you're just going to have that. Where, where they're, they're good. They're good, and they're playing really well. And if you don't hit your spots and you don't execute, and, you know, again, like, so, for those young guys, it's just you got to go through it. You got to learn it, and, and you can you got to have power stuff. If you want to beat power, you got to have power stuff, and especially when they're playing really well. You, you got to get in, you got to get up, and you got to land your two strike pitches. And I mean, 
they're just they're playing great. I know that sounds cliche, but it's like they, they just are. They're just they're playing great. They're really good. They're talented. They're offensive, and and they they're putting it together at, at at the right time for themselves. And sometimes it's not as much what you're not doing, but what they are doing, and, and you know they're doing it. What's the message to a, to a younger team when maybe the, the calls aren't going away from the umpires and what's like maybe Ethan uh, maybe got discouraged a little bit? Kind of what's the message to, to a young group when that happens? Well, you know, <laughs> you know, I told him, uh, I told him a couple stories, but uh, all good, all good stuff. Like they're just going through it. You know, we we we've talked all season. And, and we've talked about being a young team and going through it and learning all that kind of stuff. And you know, I remember a couple of years ago when we were when we were playing against Maryland to finish the season, and uh, they it was kind of like the winner take all, like the winner kind of goes to the postseason a couple of years ago. And a lot of those guys were on that team, right? Those young guys were on that team and they won the series and they're going to the postseason. And so they've been through all that stuff. You know, they found a way to get to the postseason late. They scrapped their way in, and then. And all those guys came back and, and they went through it last year. They won it and hosted a regional. They've been in like they just been in the fight. And so I just told the guys, like, they've been in the fight. And and we're going through that. Like we're going through our learning moments. It's the first time for this this group. I have a couple upperclassmen, but for the most part, this is our first time as a group going through like a, a chase like that, right? Going through on the stretch and all those different things. And and what you have to learn is like one day is one day and one game is one game. And sometimes you're Sometimes you're the windshield and sometimes you're the bug, right? And so that kind of happens. And so, you know, I, I, I kind of talked about that a little bit. You know, I told him, like, my, my favorite Mike Tyson quote is, like, everybody's got a plan until they get hit in the, in the mouth, right? And then all of a sudden, doesn't seem like quite as great of a plan as it did when, when you lined it up. So you just have to pick up and move on. Like, there, there are greater tragedies in the world uh, than getting your butt kicked in a baseball game, right? We're going to wake up tomorrow morning. Uh, you know, God won, and the sun's going to come up, and we're going to have a day to go play a baseball game. So it's like there, there are people that are facing real problems in the world, and and as much as I want to win, and we want to win, and I know like I'm, you know, we're everybody's dependent upon winning and all that kind of stuff. It's like it is what it is. It's one day, and so pick up and move on. If you want to, if you want to compete for a Big Ten championship, you got we got ten games left. You have every opportunity to do that, right? They're playing great, and they may play like that, like that again tomorrow, but I can't imagine that anybody can play as well as they're playing every day for the rest of the season. So it's like, all right, move on, right? And so you want to have a chance to compete, you have a chance to compete the rest of the season. You want to have a chance to compete to win a Big Ten championship in a tournament, you can do that. You want to have a chance to compete in the postseason and make a run to Omaha, like, you can still do that, right? It's just you can't allow one day to, to have, like, we've, we, we were 14-2 and two in two runner less games. These guys are tough. They've, they've competed. They found a way to win against all odds. Like you're the preseason sixth or seventh team in the league. We finished eighth last year. We're, we're, you're playing, you know, 10 or 15 freshmen and sophomore every day. It's like they're doing a really good job. At some point, we were going to get hit in the mouth. At some point, like the, 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 the house of cards was going was gonna, to was gonna crumble a little bit and we were going to have to pick it up and, and, and problem solve and move forward. So, okay, so what happened to be this weekend to this point? But it doesn't have to be that way tomorrow. It doesn't have to be that way moving forward. So just that that message, you know, it's like we've all been there. It's life. Move on. Pick up and go forward and, and make an adjustment and let's be better tomorrow. That kind of thing. Clearly to us, you know, and the fans who have been here, they know you're much better this year and that it's been a huge step forward. You're getting national attention. But what do you say to the fans who maybe tuned out after last year are here for the first time? You know, this weekend the crowd's been much bigger to stick with you after, you know, after maybe it hasn't been in a year and then they see this. How do you message to them? Well, I, I, I certainly I certainly appreciate the obviously the support and the fans and the encouragement and and you know, I would I, I would say that, that, that most folks can can uh, they've been through it. If you played sports, if you if you watch sports, if you have kids, right, and you and you live you you're you're living in this world every day, you can look around and say, Hey, these guys have had a good season. They're doing a lot better. It was a bad, you know, not a good day yesterday, not a good day today. Um, but to pick up tomorrow and go play. But, you know, it, it, it's different when it's personal. It's different when it's your, like, I grew up here. It's like I look up and there's 20 people from my family here today, right? You know, my high school football coach comes to the games. Like, my high school teachers are here. There's, there ain't nobody, there ain't nobody that cares more about this place and cares more about this program than I care about this place. And so... I, I also know what these guys have done to put themselves in this position. I also know how hard it is 
to, to do it the way that we've done it, where it's like you're, you're going to go through the tough stuff with the ultimate vision of being able to compete at the highest level of not just this league, but in the country. And to do that, you, like we talked about a million times, you have to go get really good young players. You have to go through the tough stuff. You have to grow up. You have to invest. You have to develop. And you have to, to, to find your way to becoming a, a great team through the process of doing that. So I would say, if, you know, I appreciate you coming. And I'm very, very supportive. And I'm, I'm very appreciative of your support, their support. Um, and, and we'll just keep getting better. But, but one or two days is not going to define the season. And uh, you know, we'll move forward. There were technically two errors, but in general, the defensive play was pretty solid. What yeah. do you take from that, and are, do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was the – which one? There's the a bobble off? in left field in the pickoff. Yeah. The bobble in left field, he just – he tried to throw it before he had it in the pickoff. But, yeah, we've, we've, we've played good defense throughout the course of the season. You know, we were athletic enough to really defend. You know, Tyler Sterling made a great play up the middle, and – and, and Glasser made a couple of really good plays in the six hole. So you, again, when you're when you're looking at it as a coach and you're trying to evaluate the game and what do I need to do better? What, what do we need to do next to navigate? Yeah, a big part of it is like where are we at defensively? Are we still engaged? Are we still making good plays? And we did throughout the course of the game. And so we took care of the ball. We were engaged. We were competitive. And, and you know that has to be a, obviously a, a staple of a, of a successful team and it was today. So I agree. You you can learn more about where your team's at. And I think in the way that you play defense, um, because it's not always the most glamorous thing in the world to go out there and, and, uh, and, and pick up a ground ball or, or get in front of a line drive or hit the cut or any of those things. So we stayed locked in, we stayed engaged, and, uh, and, uh, and, and took care of the ball here exactly right. You've, men you've mentioned a couple of years that a couple of times this year that it's important to test yourselves as a young team. Do you think in a few weeks you'll be able to look back on the series and say it made you guys better? A hundred percent, a hundred percent, and that's where. You know, as a, as a coach, like that's where, like, my mind is as a coach. You hit the nail on the head there, where it's like, okay, you want to compete at the level, then, then you're on the field with the guys who won it last year and hosted a regional and have been top 25 for most of the year, and so you get on the field with them and you learn how to play, right? You learn how to compete. Okay, so we weren't there yesterday, we weren't there today. So how do we do it for tomorrow? And you just you just have to live and learn and you harden yourself to to those experiences and. And, and just like the example you, you, you talked about last week where we got drilled to East Carolina. We got drilled, right? Run off the field. And we picked up after that and won a bunch of games. And it made us better over the long run of the season. And so sometimes those, those things happen. You look at, uh, you know, I, I talked to him about the, the, you know, the last two national champions. You know, Ole Miss wasn't in a great spot last year about halfway through the year. And they picked up and, 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 and move forward and go on to a national championship, right? You know, Mississippi State, you know, Greg, Greg down there can speak, you know, firsthand to that where it's like you, you get beat, they, they, you don't, they get two and cued in the conference tournament two years ago, and they pick up and run off and win a national championship. So it's like you just, what you can't do is have like massive pendulum swings of emotion. And it's like you just pick up and move on. But I told the guys, failure provides far more feedback than success does. And sometimes when you don't fail, and you never want to fail as a coach, right? It's always like, let's just find a way to win this game. Let's just find a way to win this game. Uh, but sometimes when you don't fail, all of a sudden you, you, you don't have as much opportunity to learn from it as you do when you, when you, when you lose a game here or there and you get your butt kicked a little bit. And again, I, I want to win every game. Everybody wants to win every game. We're doing everything we can to win every game. But you, you, you learn a lot more, you get a lot of feedback, and it hardens you, it toughens you. And these guys have been through it before. They've been through the roller coaster. There were times last year where we, we were on a roller coaster, obviously. And so they've been through it. They'll be fine. They'll pick up. They'll move on. We'll compete. And, uh, and we'll have our day again. It just wasn't going to be uh, today. The last few Sundays have been to kind of win a series. Now tomorrow is to avoid a sweep. Yeah. Where do you strike the balance of trying to find the magnitude of what tomorrow's game means? It's just one day. It's just one day. You just... I try really hard not to, to give like huge pregame speeches because it's like if well if only this game matters then the other games don't matter. It's like it's just it's one day. It's just one game. It's the same game as we've played, you know, I don't know, forty five other times this year and you, you just go play. And the thing about it with baseball is like baseball is an everyday sport. It's just every single day you just pick up and play and pick up and play and pick up and play. And so you, you just like we'll be back here again early tomorrow morning, it'll be a, it'll be a quick turnaround and and so you, it just, I know that sounds, I'm trying to give you more than the cliche answer, but it's like, 
if, if, if like, hey guys, like this, this game means more, this game means more, it's like they all actually mean the exact same, right? They all mean the exact same. Like tomorrow's game statistically isn't of any more or any less value than next Sunday's game. It's, it's all the same. And I, and, I, and, and I think that was one thing that I, I played for Rob Cooper at Penn State, and he was, he was at Rice at the time, but he was always really good about that. I, and I played at a previous school where it was like, today is the most, you know, it was like, it was like a you know, really emotional, it was like, today is like, we have to win this game or else. And it's like, or else what? Like, the sky is going to fall in, and like, we're all going to be pulled into a vortex. Like, <laughs> so it's like, today's just today's game, and Rob did a really good job, and that really helped me because. I know you're probably shocked to, to, to learn that I was pretty tight wound and, and, uh, and, and high strung as a, as a younger uh, person. So it really helped me to kind of like take a deep breath and realize like the, the earth is not going to stop spinning on its axis based on what happened today. And it's not going to stop spinning on its axis what happens tomorrow. And you're just going to pick up and move forward. And, and now obviously we want to compete. We want to be tough and want to get better and all those kind of things. But I, don't, I just don't make too big of a deal about any, any one particular day. So it's a, there's just so much, there's so much baseball left to be played. Philip, we talked a little bit with Coach about uh, defense in particular, and that uh, you know, despite uh, the the rough results of the game, uh, the team, yourself included, uh, made several really good plays. What does that mean to, to you? What are you seeing from the rest of the team? Uh, I think it shows the maturity of our group. Um, we just never stopped playing defensively. Obviously, offensively it hasn't been going how we wanted to the last two games, but to keep our head straight and not let that go into our defensive play, um, I think that shows a lot about our team. Philip, as a left-handed batter, I guess, what did you see from uh, Kyle McCoy today? Yeah, he had a he, he had a good good two seam early on, and then uh, it kind of turned more into a sinker um, as he lost a little bit of velo. But worked both sides of the plate, um, kind of threw what you know what we were expecting, but we just didn't get the hits. McCoy's been hit hard by everybody so far. You were the first team not to hit him hard this year. What was different? I mean, you kind of mentioned him, but what was different that he did to you guys that he hasn't done the other season as someone, rest, other rest of the season as someone at the plate who was taking these pitches? Right, yeah, some, got, some guys, uh, you know, they don't have whatever it was with whoever he pitched against before, but I know today when I saw him, he was pretty good, and, you know, we've had a lot of really good pitchers, and then, Sometimes it's just baseball, so uh, it's tough to po point, you know, your finger at one thing. But um, I just know today that you know we just didn't execute, and you know he, he had a good game. Yesterday it was more of a strikeout heavy approach from the Maryland pitchers than today. Sixteen groundouts from McCoy. What was kind of the, the difference and the challenge of facing the two? Uh, we we're just on a lot. We we're just on the top of a lot of pitches from him and uh, Dean. We we're just kind of pulling off of them, and and just uh, that's pro that's pretty much it for those two guys how difficult is it when you know Maryland jumps on you guys in the first inning yesterday they, they got the home run in the first inning today changes the leverage of everything you're doing it didn't look like it affected you guys in your physical play you know mistakes or anything but mentally what does that do when you're having to fight from from behind uh, from from jump yeah I mean we've been down in a lot of games early on we came back and won so I think you know collectively in the dugout um, no matter what the score is before like the seventh inning, you know, we know we're going to be in the ball game one way or the other. Obviously, the last two games got, you know, away from us, but there's been a lot of games this year that we've been able to come back and just know that it's 27 outs and, you know, they have to get us out 27 times. Um, so just trying to, when they go up early, try to limit the damage and give our, give ourselves a chance. chance. It's not often. Yeah, obviously disappointed. You know, it was a big series going into it, but uh, you know, it's baseball sometimes, and it's tough to win every series throughout 60 games. And you know, luckily we've been very good the last. I don't know when the last time we lost a series was, but um, you know, it happens. But the biggest thing is, you know, we got 10 more Big Ten games, and you know, how many more other games left? So can't let it carry over. Can't let this game beat us twice for tomorrow. And just got to wake up tomorrow and you know, have a just take it one game at a time. Has been one of the conference's best offenses as a whole. Do you guys feel like maybe you're due for a breakout tomorrow? Uh, I don't know about due. I think you just kind of show up, you do the same thing, and then you know whatever happens happens, and you don't hit the panic button or anything. And obviously we're a good offense, and we just haven't showed it the last two games. But um, you just show up, you know, put the work in, and whatever day that is, then it's that day. But um, I don't know about the do or whatever. With how deep your lineup is, does it take any pressure off of you at the top of the order? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, everyone can, you know, change the game uh, in our lineup, which is really, 
really helpful because it's it's always going to be someone's day. It feels like you know the Iowa series, the Iowa State series. It's always someone else, like every game. So um, you know how deep our lineup is. It it just it, it's really good, and you know just for the long run, that's why I know that we're not going to get held down. You know the last two games we haven't been swinging it, but how deep our lineup is and all those guys that can hit. You know we're we're in, we're going to figure it out. How do you guys stay grounded when there are a lot of uh, contentious calls? Yeah, obviously you gotta you gotta respond and not react, and we can't control what the umpire calls. And you know we're not umpires, right? We're players, so we just gotta whatever they call, we just gotta move on. You know, agree or disagree, but the next pitch is coming. You have Sabu for tomorrow, I guess. Knowing that he's probably one of the top guys, I guess. When you're down in the series. How do you prepare for that? Uh, I I think we'll put a good scout report together, like we always do, and then you know come out with a plan and just try to execute it. You mentioned not letting this game beat you twice. You guys have been tapped as kind of a player like group. What's kind of the message that you anticipate, anticipate getting tomorrow from kind of you guys in the locker room? Yeah, although we lost the series, it's just like, you know, the last two weeks of Big Ten play when we lost Friday, came back one Saturday and Sunday. It's just, you know, obviously be upset about it tonight, but, you know, tomorrow it's always a you know, good attitude. And, you know, you don't know what the game is going to be again. Like, you know, the team will really click. That concludes this post game media edition of Talking Hoosier Baseball. Indiana and Maryland have one more game left in the series. And that is 12 noon on Sunday. Indiana will attempt to tie Maryland in the Big Ten standings. See you at the park.